Hi guys, just another video analysis on an A grade example for the creating text persuasive speech or response. Uh, one thing that I want to point out here is that uh, we've gone through or rather I've gone through an A plus example regarding uh, fashion and ethical um, clothes manufacturing. Uh, clearly that's not up everyone's uh, kind of alley, no pun intended because it was alley fashion, but here is an example of umpiring is ruining the AFL. So this student was quite passionate about this being a football player themselves and having watched it uh, live on TV. Uh, the point that I'm trying to make here is that the examples that I show you aren't necessarily always going to be uh, high end in terms of their topics or their scientific um, uh, in nature, as long as you have some logical arguments that are either um, emotive, ethical, or logical, um, you're able to argue any point because the point of this topic isn't to pick a hard topic to argue, but rather one that you're passionate about and or um, can cleverly argue using various um, examples of statistics, facts, and uh, wordplay as such. So let's read this one and have a look. Um, you can see here that in this example, I've gone ahead and just color-coded um, the emotive language um, that clearly stands out because the words have key significant meaning or terms. Just an improvement from my last analysis where I didn't do that for the A+, but we'll get the gist of it. Okay. So let's look at the introduction. It's short, it's sweet, it's going to cover um, the, the key topics that it's going to discuss. But let's go ahead. Since its first bounce in 1858, whether as a player or spectator, Australian rules football has become a staple of many an Australian sporting interest. So a bit of a generalization there um, in terms of it becoming a staple for many. Uh, so every Australian, which may not be true, but it reinforces the passion and love of our specific game. Older than Australia's Federation, which is actually factually true, um, the game has survived. So there's that personification of the game being somewhat human because it survived two world wars and ensured that a fair game is played by all. So um, here I quite like uh, the personification of that, but also uh, we can see some Australian terminology as in fair game. Um, we'll see it appear again. Um, so all these terms are somewhat relating to the sport of AFL. However, in the last decade, the once simple game, well to Australians at least, and this is a, a parenthesis where a bit of additional information has been included in the statement. Here we know that the audience is um, towards Australians because we understand the game and that's a direct reference to it being understood by us but not many in or all over the world has become complicated through the unnecessary rule changes that has led to inaccurate umpiring. As such, the accumulating rules that are slowing down the once fast-paced game needs to be left on the bench. And there's that uh, metonymy of, um, I guess, a term that is uh, in relation to the topic. So left on the bench or sidelined or injured um, is uh, being used here. They're saying that uh, the, the rules um, that keep on changing need to be left on the bench, which means left alone or off to the side, so a proper game can be played. So a nice little clever um, historically um, inducing uh, introduction about their line or argument. Remembering that this isn't a discussion where they talk about the benefit of um, why the rules have been uh, brought in, but rather arguing against them. The AFL needs to stop updating the rule book in order to give it and the dissatisfied players, coaches, and spectators a break. So there's a nice triplet there of who it's impacting, not just the players. As ever since 2009, there has been a staggering 36 changes to the one's vibrant game. Slowing down the game to a halt, these rules were created under the guise of reducing injury. However, according to the Australian Institute of Health and Welfare 2011 to 2012 report, into the 8.8 of injuries associated with the AFL, these supposed improvements are yet to have an impact within the high intensity contact sport. So they're using statistics to argue their point that the rules are having no impact on the injuries. Why is a contact sport deemed to be one of the most physically challenging, only beating out soccer, a sport considered to be a non-contact, to claim first place by less than 0.6%? It's a comparative question which is um, getting us to just uh, f consider um, the, the physical nature of both games, but rather that we would consider the injury rate to be much higher um, in AFL because it is considered a contact sport. Um, you might argue that either way, but it's helping to draw that comparison. Um, is this because of the umpiring calls or rather the players' sensibilities whereby they play hard and fast? 
Comparatively, even if the increased number of calls by the umpires helps to minimize injuries, all this is going to do is cause other problems such as delayed play or worse, soft free kicks. This could not be truer as in their respective players' uh, post-players' careers as a com commentator for the great sport, Kane Corns this year voiced his frustration stating, Our game has always been about uh, has always been at its absolute best when those in control let the play go. It is it always results in a much more enthralling and physical contest. So they're using their expert opinion. Further addressing the need for umpires to hold back as the more free kicks in 2019 is a recipe for disaster. Even if the chief executive officer of the AFL, uh, Gil McLaughlin, believes that the changes are meant to make the game free-flowing, how can this be true? So we have that uh, subtle rebuttal, um, which is then going to be uh, addressed through a question. Um, how can this be true? As with the simple statistics of there now being fewer clearances and plays per quarter within the average match. There is, as they say, a no contest as to whether the game has improved by means of reduced injury or speed. So once again, we have that um, uh, hypophoria um, of a question being asked and then being answered. We then have the play on words of no contest in regards to the sports, but now as in referring to um, it being uh, not up for discussion in terms of the rules actually having an impact. Who likes watching a game with the winning team being determined by free kicks? So it's a rhetorical because the answer would be no, no one. Um, if the AFL keep enforcing the new quota of free kicks, this is what the supporters will be looking forward to. So there's that sarcasm there. This sentiment is then not only voiced by fans as when asked about um, his thoughts on the changes in rules, which has led to continuous free kicks, active player Taylor Walker responded with, honestly, aren't we, uh, honestly, aren't we, all, I think that should be all playing a contact game. Um, so honestly, aren't we? Uh, so there's a bit of a spelling error there. Um, so nice bit of revision. Um, but what they're doing here is they're using another expert opinion from an active player. Uh, there was a post player of Kane Corns, who's now a commentator. And they then reinforce this quote or really clarify it in their explanation. This confusion is causing chaos, confusion, so a bit of uh, unnecessary repetition there, but um, this is causing chaos, confusion, and disillusion. So I like that alliteration and the triplet amongst the clubs, but is, uh, is not only, but is also holding the game back from being more publicized to the world due to a lack of concrete rules. Football was already, is already an incredibly obscure sport with the addition of at least 100 rules since 1994, picking every tiny floor of the game uh, picking every tiny floor of the game, trying to not let the players just play. The league's attempt for Port Adelaide to play once a year in Shanghai and on and off games sometimes played in New Zealand won't solve this. If the rules are simplified and return to the energetic games we were all used to 10 to 15 years ago, there is absolutely no hope for other countries to be a part of Australian rules football. I'm just going to correct that. Oops. The key problem is that uh, the key problem is that the AFL are blinded. So there's a nice little emotive there. They're not f uh, literally um, blinded, but figuratively blinded in seeing fault in the contentious decisions by umpires, primarily because it makes the league not want the sport to be considered a blood sport anytime soon. However, fans, both old and new, do not want the rules making decisions as they currently stand after the siren. An example of this is the recent infamous blockbuster uh, Anzac Day game, so I like that term of infamous blockbuster, or infamous, of Collingwood versus Essendon. The game ended in almost comical fashion whereby the new rules caused at least two instances where the players stopped, assuming a free kick would be played, yet the whistle never sounded. So they're using this anecdotal evidence to suggest the fallacy or the problem with the rules. These declared outrageous decisions evoked havoc, especially upon the Essendon supporters, arguing, arguably causing their, team to, uh, causing their team defeat. It was only then after the game that AFL umpire Sean Ryan admitted that there was definitely some errors. Evidently, this is not the only occasion when either players, fans and coaches were left puzzled by the unnecessary decisions or inconsistent umpiring that injured the flow of the game as a result of the rule. So there's that nice... Um, metaphor but also personification of injuring the physical game um, because of these rules. 
Yet, even with established coaches such as Alastair Clarkson pleading for consistency and brown load medalist Patrick Dangerfield calling some rules an absolute disgrace, the rules remain ironically unchanged. While the umpires are trying their best to get it right, it's time for the AFL to call it quits in an attempt to make this game better. Uh, in order to make, uh, in its attempts to make the game better, but all it's doing is confusing everyone that is associated with the game. Um, so a nice little, uh, I guess, final statement there uh, before moving to the conclusion. With player skill improving each year, it's hard to watch our once great game be sidelined, so that, once again, reference to sports, by the Umpires Association impacting both players and teams' performance with inconsistent decisions. Thus, creating fans to forget what the game used to be like. For the AFL, keeping the rules simple will help win back the broken hearts of the general fan base whereby umpires, as their name implies, know how the game should be played and make the right call. So they kind of end on that, I guess, prolific statement about the umpires doing the job and making the double uh, pun right call. Um, I should also remind you that uh, numerous um, sources have been referenced and at the end of it, a bibliography has been made. Thankfully to all of you having completed research projects, <laughs> you should know how to do this, but um, you should certainly attempt it to add factual support to your arguments where possible. Um, and as you can see, the student has actually more than enough uh, references. You won't need this many, but at least uh, three to four would be nice to show expert opinion, statistic, and fact. Thank you.